for a really overwhelming gig. This is Ikatar. Let's do this. What's going on, guys? Ikatar here. Hope you're doing well. If you couldn't tell by the same t-shirt as last video, I am out on the road. I am going to be in Gulf Shores, Alabama this weekend, along with Mississippi and Memphis for a run of country gigs. And let me tell you, it has been a harrowing time. I actually got the call for this gig a two or three weeks ago, and I had to learn 36 originals in a week for the first rehearsal, refine those things for the second rehearsal, and finally we're going to have a finished product happening here in just a couple days. I wanted to take this video to talk to you guys about how to prepare for an overwhelming gig. Obviously, if you guys get the call for a 36-song gig, you know, that, that happens from time to time. You have to be ready to adapt to those things and learn those songs and get ready for your gig. So I'm going to tell you guys what I typically do to get ready for giant gigs like this to kind of mitigate the stress and make sure that everyone's comfortable with the source material. Now, the first thing I do whenever I get a list of songs to learn, I always make sure I put them into a giant sheet of my own. I've got a sheet here. It's a number sheet with all of the songs we're learning over three pages. I've got a whole bunch of different columns for information for myself. I've got things like key. I've got things like where the solos are at. I've got things like where the Spotify links are, or if I have a Dropbox folder of these originals, I may have another link to those things. I have things like whether I have a chart for those songs or not, whether I have a certain guitar tuning standards, and also just some general notes. It's important to have this sheet kind of an idea with you so that you know exactly what you're getting into for each song. Sometimes when I go through songs, I may forget a key by mistake, and then I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? It's a good thing I have this giant sheet at my fingertips during a gig so I can look at it and make sure that I know what I'm doing. Now the next thing I do after I make out a list of the songs, I begin to chart a bunch of songs. So charting is a great way of ingraining the chords within your mind and how the parts go in the song, and also for you to have a personal reference of how the song lays out. So I actually took all 36 songs. There were some exceptions, but in general, I made a bunch of charts. You can kind of see that I've got some charts here. I've got all kinds of different things going on. This notebook, but charts are the main thing. And those charts are there for me in case I ever need them. Now, ideally in a gig, you'll want to run it without the charts, but in case you need those charts, you have them. And in fact, some bands who don't have a lot of charts actually pay good money to people who chart for them. So learning to chart a song is a really crucial skill. I'll go over that in a little video, but charting is a really great thing to do before you start learning the songs. The next thing to do after charting your songs is to start practicing, but where to start? Things to keep out in mind for any song that you're playing is, does the guitar start the song? Does the guitar have a solo? And are the parts in it difficult? Those are things that you're going to have to look out for when you're breaking down the songs you're playing in a set. It would be terrible if you started the set and you didn't know the part or you forgot the part for that song. It's happened to everybody, don't get me wrong, but you're not going to want to want that happen on a regular basis. You may not get the gig, okay? So make sure that you know what songs you start, what songs you may finish, and what songs are really heavily guitar driven so you can determine what parts you might learn to get through the song. The next part is bite off the elephant one bite at a time. That's the easiest way, guys, of getting used to these songs is just playing them, getting used to them, and getting them underneath your fingertips. And don't forget, when you actually translate that to on stage, you have to be so well-versed in the song, so well-versed in the part, that you're able to actually put on a show. No one wants a brick wall just standing there on stage playing guitar. Been there, done that. It's not that great, especially not a great optic for the lead singer of the band, Okay, the one you're performing for. For, so make sure that you know the songs well enough, you're taking your time with them to make sure that you have enough time to be present on the stage. Final piece of advice is have fun. I know it's super easy when we're planning for a really big gig, especially ones with tons of new material you have to learn, that you get in this tunnel vision mode. You can't really see the forest for the trees. You're like, why am I doing this? Am I getting paid enough for this? I can't believe I got the call for a gig and I have to learn all these songs. It's a big time suck. I understand that. But listen, we're musicians. What we do is what we love. 
Don't get discouraged by the amount of material. Not only are these songs going to make you a better musician over time and as you learn them, but you're going to make new friendships, new relationships, and build your vocabulary of music within the town you're in. And for Nashville, knowing these songs for this artist is really important. And you never know, I may get another call from this artist in the future. Guys, I hope you really liked this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. Guys, wish me luck. As of this video, I've done a gig on Thursday already. I've got one on Saturday and Sunday. Then we're back home in Nashville. Wish me the best of luck. It'll be a great time. It'll be a fun time. Have a good day, guys, and we'll see you next time on iGuitar. Yeah.